We greet you this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus as we welcome you to today's telecast of the Reaching Out program. I'm Elder Rudy Roussel, and this program originates from the Greater Emmanuel Apostolic Temple, 750 West Galbraith Road in the city of Cincinnati. My pastor is the Honorable Bishop Paul Alexander Bowers. We welcome you to this program, and we, our prayer today for you is that the Lord continues to bless you and to enlighten you richly. It is our hope that something is done or said in the word of the Lord that would encourage you to continue to seek his face and to seek his favor in your lives. There's a scripture that says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus himself said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Paul said, In him we move and have our very being. So our thoughts and our hearts and our minds should be focused on Jesus, the God of our salvation, our deliverance, for without the shedding of blood, there would be no mission for sins. Let us pray this morning. <clears throat> Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for your grace, for your mercy, for your love and kindness. We know, Lord, that all power rests in your hands and that you are God above every nation. We thank you, Lord, for your death, burial, and resurrection. We thank you, Lord, for the baptism in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the Holy Ghost that leads us and guides us, Lord, in all righteousness and in all truth. Lord, anoint your servant this morning, Lord, who will help produce this telecast this morning and their families as well. Lord, we ask that all of the viewers who are in tune to this program today, Lord, receive a special word from the Lord. We ask, Lord, that you touch those hearts that were broken. Bind them up, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you those that are downtrodden. We ask, Lord, that you touch those who are sick in their bodies, Lord. We ask, Lord, because we know that you are a heart fixer and a mind regulator. Lord, we just honor you today. We glorify and exalt you because it is you alone who's truly worthy to be praised. Lord, we thank you for what you have done in the lives of your people. We give you glory. We thank you, Lord, for the things that you're about to do in the name of Jesus. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Again, we say praise the Lord to you and we thank you once again for tuning in to the Reaching Out program. Uh, last, on our last telecast, we talked to you briefly uh, from the second ch chapter of the book of the Old Testament. And there were some thoughts and some things in verse 20 that we had hoped to, to touch upon, but we were not unable to. And today, time and the, the Lord permitting, will do so. Those of you who have your Bible, I would encourage you to turn with me to Second Chronicles chapter 20. And we'll start... At verse 17. And it says, And ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves and stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Nor go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Verse 20. He says, And they rose early in the morning and went forth in the wilderness of Tekoa, and as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in, your God, in, in the Lord your God, so ye shall be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness, as they went out before the army to say, praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And the thought this morning is in verse 20. And it says, I'll read it again. <clears throat> and it says, and they rose early in the morning and went forth in the wilderness of Tekoa. And they went forth, so fat stood and said, hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. So shall ye be established, believe his promise, so shall ye prosper. And the thought this morning is simply believe in God. Last time, last telecast, we talked about the insurmountable odds that Jehoshaphat was faced with in this particular chapter. Uh, 
The Bible says that a great multitude had come up against him. And the multitude being the Amorites and the Moabites and the Edomites. And the scripture says, and besides them there were others that came. Uh, Jehoshaphat was not aware at this particular time, or according to scripture, that his country was being invaded, that Israel was being invaded. And that's how it is a lot of times in our lives. We're in situations where we're not completely aware of the fact that the adversary is preparing himself to do battle with the children of God. Now, it's not that sometimes we're in situations where we have done things or we have fallen from grace with God and these things happen as a result of some particular type sin, perhaps, that we may have committed. Not always, but sometimes God is there and he permits these things to happen in the lives of the children of men to strengthen them, to fortify them, to try them like pure gold. These things that come up against us are not designed for our demise, but they're designed to help us, to strengthen us spiritually so that we may be of greater service to the Lord. God did not deliver us from a world of sin and filth and degradation and bring us into the body of Christ Cover us up under the blood of Jesus to allow the devil to completely bombard our lives. To allow the devil to destroy us. That is not God's purpose. The Bible says that we were created for his glory. Or created to worship and to serve the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And if we are careful to do these things and establish righteousness as unto God, the promise eternal life will worship and serve the Lord throughout all eternity. Now, I have enough problems worrying about time, but when you discuss eternity, I, I, I cannot fathom in my mind how it will be to always and forever from everlasting to everlasting to be in the presence of the almighty God. The Bible says however he is, we're going to be just like him. But we have to be in a situation sometimes, or as it is here in scripture, we're in a situation where things are happening around us. The Bible tells you on in the, in the, in the first and uh, second chapter, uh, verse of this chapter, that there was a great multitude that had come up against him. And in life sometimes we, we face a multitude of problems, whether it's finances, whether it's your marriage, whether it's children, whether it's someone in your neighborhood or your community, people on your job. Sometimes it's just people in the supermarket just full of the devil. Can't wait to say something or to do something to aggravate or the children of God. But the Bible declares that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Now, we don't look to the world for a natural answer or solution to a spirit problem. The Bible says that God is a spirit and they that worship the Lord must worship in spirit and in truth. A lot of times we realize that circumstances blowing our minds. We don't realize how these things could have happened. Come upon us unaware and before you know it, you realize that you say, I am in, in something here that I cannot get out of and it is going to take the hand of God to deliver me from this dilemma. It is going to take the hand of God to deliver me from this situation. It is going to take the hand of God to calm the storm's life. It is going to take God to provide the peace I need. It is going to take God to lullaby me divinely at night so that I can get some rest from these problems, so that I might get some rest from the situation. But a lot of times we look for a natural answer to these problems, to, to these situations. We go and we talk to friends and we ask friends, how do we overcome some problems? And they're no more qualified to help you with those because their lifestyle is reflective of the fact that they don't have a relationship with God. So how can they tell you how to live or overcome your problems when their lives is filled with problems of their own? 
Sometimes we are distraught. Sometimes the situation have us so depressed, so compressed by everything that we become oppressed and depressed. We don't know where to turn. So we turn to somebody on our job. We turn to somebody on the street. I store a neighbor. Don't bid more, no God. But we just got to get it off our chest. We just got to go and tell somebody that some things are not right in our lives, knowing that they can't help us. The Bible said that when Jehoshaphat realized what was going on, him, that the enemy had already invaded the kingdom of Israel, that Judah and Jerusalem was already infiltrated by the adversary, by the devil, by his enemies, the Bible said he the Lord. He feared and was seeking the Lord. And sometimes we take our eyes off of the, off of the source of our help, the source of our strength, and we buy the problem even greater than what it is because we've lost focus on God. Sometimes we're just overwhelmed. But these things are, de are designed to bring us closer to God, closer to God, to bring us closer to God. The Bible says that Jehoshaphat proclaimed a fast and prayer throughout all of Israel. Everybody humbled themselves. Everybody went down on their knees and fasting and praying. Sometimes the Bible says some things come by fasting and praying. And sometimes we need to realize that the only way we're going to get out of this situation is to seek the God of our salvation. Sometimes if we don't count on the problem and just say instead or in spite of, I'm still going to seek God. About to foreclose on my house. The Lord is the answer. I'm going to consult the Lord. My car has been repossessed. It's broke down. I need a new motor, a new transmission. I'm on. If it's a spiritual nature, my children are running wild, running around like they're crazy. This city is being besieged by a spirit of murder and mayhem. And my children, Lord, are living in this community, and in this environment. Lord, help me. You have to seek the Lord. You have a spiritual problem, you have to go to God because he is a spirit and they that worship the Lord must worship in spirit and in truth. That holiness without which no man gonna see God. He said, be ye holy for I am holy and you're not gonna find holiness in the world. All you're gonna find in the world is the world and more of the world. It's designed to destroy you. It's designed to take your affection and your focus off of the God of your salvation. It is designed to provide you with pleasures and with sin so that you won't be looking for the God of your salvation. The devil is not with people in the world. He's already got them. It's the church folk that he's after. He's after the church folk, those that will go out outside of the confines of the church and will go out into the world and, and try and talk about the goodness of Jesus. It is those that are in the church that can go witness to other folks to let them know that there's a better way, that they can be saved, that God does love them, and that his real purpose for them is not to be consumed by the adversary, but to worship and serve the Lord in the beauty of holiness. So he does things, he causes problems, he creates confusion. And we all know that God is a God of order. He's not a God of confusion, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The Bible said, let this mind be in you also in Christ Jesus. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no man cometh to the Father except by me. But some we're in troubles, and we're being bombarded with different difficult situations. We look other than where we know God can be found. We look outside of the body of Christ. And that's not going to help you at all. It's going to create more problems. It's going to already help you. To, to, it's not going to help you to overcome the problem. It's going to create other problems. That's all it's going to do. So when you have a spiritual problem, you go to the place of huge. You go to the hospital, and it's here in the church of the Almighty God. This is a hospital. This is a place where you can come get your healing. This is a place where your soul can be saved. This is where your heart can be fixed. This is a place where your mind be regulated. This is a place where your children can come. This is a place that prepares you for the things outside of the in the world. This is the place. Yet, but on Sunday morning, this is the last place in the world people on Sunday morning, 
This is the only place that, where blacks and whites, they can't worship and serve the Lord together in the beauty of holiness. But yet outside of here, we all call each other brothers. This is the place for the presence and the power of the God of your salvation. Here, it's in the body of Christ. This is where our answer is. It's not so much that other are going through. It's not so much that nobody else can understand your pain. It's not that nobody else doesn't understand your suffering. It does not mean that people don't realize what you're going through. Solomon himself said there's nothing new under the sun. If it's happening to you now, it's happened to someone somewhere else before. The Bible said we are to comfort one another as we have been comforted. And here Jehoshaphat see he's in uncertable in a, in a situation where he is not certain on what to do, how to get out of this situation. But the one thing he does know is that he has to seek the Lord. The Bible tells him, be not afraid, nor be dismayed. I have failed God miserably in my life. But since I have been in the body of Christ, God has never ever failed me. Even outside the body of Christ, he's shown mercy. Day, day I got up. Day after day I got up. Day after day I got up. And that's solely because his mercy endures forever. Because he reigns on the just as well as the unjust. I realized after I got saved, I got real, I put on the mind of Christ. I realized after I came into the body of Christ that God was merciful to me the whole time I was in darkness. But I came out of darkness, was added to his perfect and to his marvelous light. I'm a child of the light, a child of the king, a, a member of the kingdom of God. We still going to go through. We still have problems, just like Jehoshaphat here. He's so overwhelmed with what's going on, but knew the source of his help. He knew where his deliverance came from. He knew that there's nobody more powerful than God. He knew where to go. He knew what to do, and that was to seek the Lord. The Bible says, in chapter 20, he said, and they rose up early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. They rose up early in the morning. Sometimes God taps us on our shoulders in the midnight hour. Sometimes God will trouble you in your sleep in the middle of the night. Sometimes God will bother you in your sleep. And it's designed to get you up off that bed, to get you down on the floor, to get on your knees, and to communicate with the God of your salvation. But sometimes the adversary will stick up his head. Oh, you know you're tired. You know you're all day. You know you've been on your feet all day. Just lay there and pray, knowing that if you continue to lay there, you're going to go right back to sleep. And God may want to whisper something to your heart. He may want to whisper a word in you. He may want to give you some revelation. Or sometimes when your greatest tribulation, then God gives you your greatest revelation. But yet we're tired and the adversary is bombarding us and we stay there and we sleep and we miss out on a blessing that God might have had in store for us. But he said they rose up early in the morning and they went out in the wilderness. And in spite of the multitude, in spite of the armies that was going to pursue him, in spite of conditions, they said he praised them. He said, and when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that should praise the beauty of holiness. And as they went before the army to say, pray for his mercy endures forever. Verse 22 says, and when they began to sing and praise the Lord, the Lord set ambushes against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, where they had come against Judah. They were smitten. In spite of the things that they went through, in spite of the obstacles that they faced, in spite of being overwhelmed with problems, the Bible said they went forth and they were singing praises to the Lord. Praise the Lord and his mercy endured forever. Today, if you got bad heart, oh, today, don't praise the Lord. I got arthritis and rheumatism, shut up arthritis because we're going to bless the Lord today. In spite of my finances, in spite of my car, in spite of the folks that might give me trouble on my job, we are going to bless the Lord today. And the Bible says the enemies were smitten in spite of everything the Lord turned the tables on his problem because they in spite of the situation they still sought in their heart to worship the Lord to serve the Lord in the beauty of in spite of unsurmountable odds in spite of all of these things they still worship the Lord they still praise the Lord praise the Lord and his mercy endured forever 
It says, Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants at Seir, everyone helped destroy another. He said, at the end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy one another. The, what that means is God took the problem and had the problem destroy itself. The people had come up against him, the Amorites, the Moabites, and the Edomites. And the Bible said, and beside them there were others. So every problem that they had, every situation that they had, because of their worship and praising, because of love for the Lord, because that in spite of the situation, they still honored the God of their salvation. God turned the tides on them. God caused their enemies to kill themselves. He turned them on each other. And if we trust the Lord, or like the scripture said, that it believe the Lord and the word of the prophet, the Bible says that they were smitten and he caused them to turn and they destroyed one another. And that's how God will do with our problems. Fix your credit. He will fix your finance. He will fix your marriage. He will fix your children's heart. Your children will be saved in spite of what goes on in this city. Your children can walk around covered up under the blood of Jesus. Your children can be in the ark of safety and be in the ark of safety. No matter what happens in the community, God is still there for the people that love him, for them that believe. He said, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, John said, believe also in me. He said, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, then the problem is not as bad as it seems because you know in spite of the condition that you're going in, deliverance will come if you keep your heart and you're stayed on the Lord. They praise the Lord. The Bible says in the beauty of holiness. They still worship God. They still serve God in spite of the trouble, in spite of the situation. They went out to do battle. Stand ye this day, the salvation of the Lord. Sometimes if we take self out of the situation and let God be God in our lives, we wouldn't have to go through a lot of stuff that we go through anyhow. Anything worthwhile giving up to serve God did not need it in the first place. We don't need it. So why don't we just let God be God in our lives? The Bible said God never slumbers nor sleeps, but yet we're up all night working, worrying, worrying about how we're going to do this. How are we going to get out of this situation? My God, children, God is going to be up all night, and since he has all power and all might, you might as well go back to bed. Since he's going to be up all night anyway, he is the one that's going to deliver you. You get you some rest. You can rest in the Lord. But you have to have the mind of Christ. He said, let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. And he said, man, if I've been with you so long, you don't know who I am. He said, when you've seen me, you didn't see the Father. Other scriptures say, I'm my Father one. I even I am he, there is no Savior but me. We spend a lot of time looking for a lot of different answers when there's only one place we should go and that's to the one God of salvation. Stand, see the salvation of the Lord. The battle is not yours. It's not, it's the Lord's. And in spite of the things that we go through, in spite of the things that might overcome us, God did not save us to let the devil beat us up. It is to strengthen us. It is to help us. It is to be a blessing to those who are downtrodden. It is to be a blessing to those that are... It is a blessing to those that do not know the Lord in the salvation and the deliverance of their soul. We serve a God that's able to do all things, that has all power and all might. Jehoshaphat's prayer. He said, our eyes are upon thee. There's no place else to look. There's no place else to turn. There's none other that can deliver but God. He has all power and all might. Yet and still, we let natural situations try and help us with a spiritual problem. The only one that can help us is the Lord. The only one. It's in Jesus. Everything is in Jesus. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. 
Whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of Jesus. He said you might have life and have it more abundantly. He said search the scriptures because they speak of me. He's the only one that can save you today. There is none other. But yet outside the confines of the church, we'll look outside of the body of Christ. We'll look for help. We'll look for deliverance. And we find ourselves sinking deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. But then you better be like Peter when you realize that you're in a sinking sin. The first thing happened, Peter said, Lord, save me. And the Lord said, come. And that is what the Lord is offering you today. The Lord is telling you today, come. Turmoil in the city. I was killing each other. Come. The answer is not in legislation. It is not in city ordinances. It is not in adding more patrol cars. It's in Jesus. The answer in Jesus. The first three or four commandments, if we could learn to not have no other graven image, if we could learn to have no other God before him, if we could love the Lord with all our heart, our strength, our might, if we could do things, then there's no need for the rest of the commandments. We wouldn't worry about killing and lying and stealing and coveting and, 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 and being adulterous. We wouldn't worry about those things if we could just honor the first three or four commandments. We could do that. Our answer is not in man. It's in God. Jehoshaphat sought the Lord in the congregation, in the new court, he sought the Lord. He had a spiritual problem, and spirit must worship in spirit and truth. He has all power and all might, and he can deliver you today. All you need to do is just come. God bless you today.